let's do something interesting today. Today, I'm going to talk about low-grade geothermal greenhouse heating and cooling. When I talk about low grade, what I mean by that is there's no heat pump. The residential geothermal heating and cooling systems that you look at employ a machine called a heat pump that can multiply the heat and it does this by pressure and it will cost a lot more electricity to use this than a low grade system. The problem with a low grade system is it's not as easy to regulate the temperature within the range that you want for a residence. A high grade or a regular geothermal system can keep your house to an exact temperature, cooling it, heating it, 72 degrees Fahrenheit or whatever you want on your thermostat perfectly. A low grade system might have a 10 degree temperature range, but this isn't a problem for a greenhouse. Simple tech. That's the name of this channel. We have piles of other videos on greenhouses and growing that you can check out after you watch this one. YouTube's algorithm tends to reward those channels that have videos that you like. So if this is a topic that you like, hit like, hit subscribe, and YouTube's gonna show you more stuff like this, not just for me, but from other creators as well. Go ahead, hit like, hit subscribe. So, there's regular geothermal systems that people use on their residence and that these are the ones that you see advertised and you get sometimes rebates from your power company if you implement this type of system. And then there's low grade systems. Low grade systems cost a lot less. A high grade system with a heat pump may cost you fifteen to thirty thousand dollars. A low grade system is going to be substantially less than that. A low grade system is going to comprise itself basically some water or liquid type lines usually they're a PEX and a pump to move the liquid through them and a radiator and or a radiant floor and that's about it now to install the lines in a low-grade system you really just need an excavator and someone that's a little bit skilled in using it and time if you can do that a low-grade system is going to be fairly easy and fairly cheap to install for a liquid delivery type system. Now, one of the low grade type systems that's fairly common for greenhouses is an geo air or an air delivery system, not a liquid system. There's multiple YouTube channels and greenhouses out there that use this. Um, Sergi's LDS Prepper, St. Ida's Farm, uh, as well as Citrus in the Snow use fantastic low grade geo air systems. The biggest problem, well, there's two problems I find with the geo air system versus a liquid system though. The first one is you need to be located in an area that has good ground temperatures. So if your ground temperature is 15 degrees Celsius, a geo air system is gonna work really well for you. But if your ground temperature in winter is eight degrees or seven degrees Celsius, a geo air system isn't gonna be as good a system for you to use. Thus, we're going to talk about liquid delivery systems because I believe this type of transfer can avoid that problem with a couple modifications. So a low grade geo liquid heating and cooling system needs to be broken into two separate components. A lot of the geo air systems will heat and cool with the same air tunnel. That's possible but it's not really recommended and it's much easier to actually run completely separate systems for cooling and for heating. Now if you're in a location that needs a geo liquid heating system you may not even need a cooling system you may not get hot enough in the summers to really worry about it you might be able to get away with just venting but if you have the excavator there and you like digging and you've already paid for the time on that machine it's really not that expensive we're talking a couple hundred dollars to add the piping in to put a geo liquid cooling system separate to your geo liquid heating system. I'm going to start by describing how easy it is to put in a geo liquid cooling system. All you really need is some three quarter inch packs. You can do larger if you want. You can actually get away with smaller, but three quarter inch gives you a decent volume of liquid to pump around. 
and an excavator, um, a small taco pump and a radiator. And we're just talking a radiator out of a car. You can go to any wrecker and get a pretty decent large radiator, 50 bucks. You can buy them new for a hundred. That being said, all you need to do to get a liquid, geo-liquid cooling system is dig a trench down about eight to 10 feet. Eight feet is good and run it out about 100 feet. So you're gonna need a little bit of property to be able to do this. But if you have the property and you run that um, PEX out and you don't necessarily wanna have it as straight as possible, you can have a little curvy, you can have some bends in it, as long as there's no breaks. Um, and have one, the return section far enough away from the input section that you can get double the amount of cooling out of it. Fill it back in gently so that you're not gonna pierce the lines and you have, as long as you connect the taco pump and connect the radiator with a fan behind the radiator, you have a functional air conditioner that's gonna pump out eight to 10 degrees Celsius air as much as you want it. So you set it on a thermostat when you hit certain temperatures and bang, you're cooling your greenhouse. Heating with a geo-liquid system is there's two aspects to it. You can do like Citrus in the Snow does and run a liquid line out 100 feet or 200 feet or something like that and pick up the ground temperature eight to 10 feet down, which in the winter in areas where I live around north of Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, you're gonna pick up about eight, five to eight degrees Celsius. Now this isn't a great amount of heat to heat your greenhouse with. It may keep the frost off just but when you're trying to fight 30 below and a howling wind of, of 80 kilometers an hour, you need more heat than this. So how do you get that from a liquid system? And my suggestion is you inject heat into the ground. Instead of running out in a line, if you don't have 15 degree ground temperature in 30 below temp winters, what you need to do is actually dig out a pit type area and circle the lines around in that pit then run separate PEX lines that come out outside of the greenhouse so that you can connect evaporated tubes. And evaporated tubes take solar thermal energy and will inject it into the ground. And you have it in separate lines, but these lines are positioned only six inches to a foot above and below the other lines that go into your greenhouse that withdraw the heat. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna heat up the ground all spring, all summer, when you've got huge amounts of daylight. And then come winter, the ground is gonna be not five to seven degrees Celsius. It's gonna be 20 to 30 degrees Celsius. And now you've got some real heat that you can pump back into your greenhouse. You can put that into a radiant floor, you can put that into a radiator. It's heat that you can use and you can actually have this on a thermostat as well to heat your greenhouse in severe temperatures. So the next question comes with the idea of if you're gonna heat up a section of the ground, should I insulate it? And the answer to that is most of the geo air systems, when they heat up a section of the ground, do insulate. Some have insulated the bottom, some haven't. My suggestion is look at aircrete. Aircrete is simple to make, it's cheap to make, and you can make a lot of it fairly fast to insulate the bottom part of the pit you dig out and to insulate the walls. If you insulate the bottom of the walls and the top of 30, 40 yards that are dug out, you have something that will act as a thermal container to hold more heat and hold it longer. As well, your evacuated tubes will work in the winter in 30 below. They're not gonna work as long as they are in June. In June, you're gonna get 15 hours of heat pumping into the ground. In January, you're gonna get three or four, but it's still additional heat to heat up the ground. So instead of having the ground at 30 degrees, you may actually get the ground up to 50, 60 degrees or more by using three or four, depending on the size of the greenhouse that you have, of course. For my situation, a 200 square foot greenhouse, I'm really only gonna need one or two evacuated tubes in it. 20 to 30 yard pit that I'm gonna dig out and use as a thermal battery. 
So basically I've gone over three types of geothermal low-grade heating and cooling systems. The first is the geo air system and they're common. They work well in heating. They may not work so well in cooling. Most of the people I've talked to with cooling on the geo air geothermal systems tend to just fall back on vents. Vents are easy. Vents and fans can cool down your greenhouse. If you're in an area that needs a substantial amount of heat in winter, you generally don't get huge amounts of heat in the summer, although some areas do. Um, the liquid systems are designed more for colder climates, Canadian, Alaskan, um, North Dakota, those type of areas, even Colorado. The liquid systems can take more temperature swings. They need to be deep, they need to be done right, but especially the liquid heating system where you're injecting more heat into the system, it's a nice way to get through a cold winter with a decent amount of heat that you can have on a thermostat and control the delivery of that heat, either by a radiant floor or by a radiator with a fan behind it that turns on and off as heat is needed. As long as you can keep the amount of heat you need, a low grade system can actually stay within five, six degrees Celsius of your desired temperature. But if you want to have exact temperature control, you're going to have to spend a lot of money and incorporate it in the pump. So for a greenhouse, all you need is a liquid geothermal low grade system. And it should be enough to keep your plants happy because plants are used to growing in nature. And nature does not keep a steady, even temperature. It's colder at night, it's warmer in the day. You just want to make sure that they survive through the night and can thrive during the day. Have a great day. Hope to see you in the next video.